Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time we're going to jump into reports. Reports are a type of object in your access database that are used to present information professionally. For example, if I look at this alphabetical list of products report, which is a sample report in the Northwind database, I see some things that I cannot get from a table or a query data sheet, which can also be printed, but a report will make your information more professional because a report can have things such as headers. Here I've got a report header that's listing the alphabetical list of products, a title, as well as a current date, and you can also group and subtotal records. So in this case, I've got the records grouped by the first letter of their product name, which is kind of cool. And then within that letter, they're listed in alphabetical order. In this report, I've got a nice report header again. I've got three columns. I've got different categories by which the records are grouped. And I've got a subtotal number of products in each category for beverages, condiments, so on. The reports basically allow you to present and organize and also subtotal your information all in one object. Now, reports are read-only, so I can look at the data, but I cannot change it. But remember, all reports are based off of a table or a query record set, which means that if the data changes, the report is automatically going to be updated as well. You never have to worry about your reports being out of date. Now, when we create a report, there's all these different tools that you can use. The report wizard is a very common way to create a report. But I like to organize the information that I'm going to show on the report first before I use the report wizard and I'll show you why. For example, if I wanted to show this information, which is products by company, it's company names, their orders, different products that were on each order, quantity for each of those products, and then a subtotal, which is the quantity times a unit price for that particular item. Let's say I wanted to show this on a report because I wanted to subtotal each order and I wanted to subtotal the revenue by company all in one presentation. I could do that with a report. The first step then is to simply gather the information that you want in the query before you start the report wizard. And I'll show you why. When I close this query and I start the report wizard, it's going to ask me what table or query do you want the information to come from. Now I could pick through the tables. Those five fields in that query come from four different tables. The customers table, the orders table, the products table, and the order items table. I could pick through this wizard and select those fields individually from those different tables, but it's a whole lot easier if I organize them first in a query and look at that data and then simply select all of my fields. And when I click the next button, the report wizard already realizes that there are many orders per company and there are many line items per order. Would you like to have your report organized this way? And you can try the different options in the wizard, see a little preview of how it's going to look on your report. Choose by products, then it's just organize every product and then all of the orders inside that product. So it depends on what you want to see. Do you want to see the information by product or do you want to see the information by customers or do you want to see the information by each order? I'm going to go by customers and show you how that looks in report design view and also show you how to modify it if you want to modify it later. Next, you want to add any more grouping levels. No, I don't. Products within order, within company, seem fine to me. Next, and then short order is asking you, do you want to sort the records inside of each order? I'll sort them by product name. Next question asks you about the aesthetics of your report. You can choose these different options and see if you can get a glimpse, an idea of how they're going to look. In this little picture, I never found that all that helpful. And then portrait and landscape is just how is your paper going to be oriented up and down or sideways. Oftentimes on reports, you have to go with landscape because you've got so many different columns and you need to fit them all on a piece of paper. But for this one, I've only got five fields, so I think I can get by with portrait. Next, and then what title do you want for your report? I'm going to call it the customer order summary report. Finish. Now here's what the wizard gave me so far. Not bad. Company name, order IDs, and then the products inside each order. If I keep scrolling down, I'll see the next customer, their orders, and then the line items, the products inside each order. So this is pretty good, but I'd like to make some changes. Particularly, I'd like to subtotal each order, and I'd also like to subtotal each company name. And we'll get to that in these screencasts as well. But if I go into design view, I'm going to see section bars. 
And that is one of the keys to understanding access report. The sections determine where and how often each control, and a control is simply an item inside that section, prints in the report header, the controls print once at the top of the first page. In the page header, these controls are going to print at the top of every page. And on the first page, it prints after the report header. The company name header, that prints once for every company. The order ID header prints once for every order ID. The detail section prints once for every record in the record set. So for every line item, we're going to get these three controls. Page footer, as you might suspect, prints at the bottom of every single page. And the report footer, which isn't open, I can open that up, prints at the bottom of the last page, but wherever the report ends. The page footer always hugs the bottom of every page, whereas the report footer is going to float up and down on that last page, wherever the natural ending of the report is. So the first thing in mastering reports is, one, create a query to collect the data that you want to see on the report, and number two, understand these section bars and that they control where and how often the controls inside them print. Now I want to open up the property sheet with this little button of the report as well and tell you about the most important property of the report itself, and it's this record source property. And you can see that the record source is the products by company query. I could even go to the build button here and add or delete or modify fields in that query and then they would be available to that report if I so desired. But if you ever go to this record source property and you see an SQL statement that starts with the word select, you might want to build, go into query design view, and save that query with a name instead of having an SQL select statement here for the record source. And the reason is, once you create a query and name it, it's going to show up here in the navigation screen, which allows you to modify it easier. It allows you to reuse that query in different reports and different forms, and it also improves performance. So the record source property should point to a query name. Okay, the last thing I want to tell you in our first video on reports is this word control. Every item in a report or in a form is called a control. For reports, there are really only two major controls to worry about. The first is a label, and this one's a label. I'm going to double-click edge of it so I open up its property sheet, and I can see right here in the top of the property sheet that its selection type is a label. A label is simply text. It's text that shows up on the screen. It doesn't ever change. The property of a label is the caption property because that determines what that label is going to show. If I wanted to change that label to customer name, I could either change it directly on the label or I could change the caption property because those two are connected. However, when we get into these sections that display data, I'm looking at a text box control. Now that is a funky name because text box in Access and almost all programs can contain any kind of data, not just text. So in the company name text box, it does show text because the company name is text. But the order ID is a number, the product name is text, the quantity is a number, the subtotal is a calculation, and all of these are text box controls. One of the biggest things to wrap your mind around when we're working in report and form design view is that each item is a control. And sometimes the labels look very similar to the text boxes, but they're very, very different. A label simply displays text. It can be any text, whereas a text box displays data from an underlying field. The most important property of a text box on the data tab is its control source property. And if I click this drop down list, it will give me a list of the fields that underlie this report so I can choose them carefully. Because in a text box, I can't make this company space name. It's not the field name. The field name is company name, no spaces. If I put a space there, I'm going to get an error message on the report because a text box must be connected must be bound, we call it, to a valid field name, and we find that on the data tab. Notice that on these labels, there's no properties on the data tab because labels are just clarifying text, whereas text boxes, the data tab, and the control source property is the most important thing. It identifies what 
field that, that text box is connected to. Down here in the page footer, we have an expression equal sign now, left or right parentheses, so it's going to display the current date using the now function, which always displays the current date. And over here, we also have an expression that starts with an equal sign. We have the word page connected to a built-in page field connected to the word of with spaces around it connected to the built-in pages field, which is the total number of pages on that report. So if I save this and look at it again in print preview, then I've got my report header section, my page header section, which shows these labels. There's my customer ID header, my order ID header, which prints once for every order, and my detail section, which prints once for every record in the underlying record set, which in this case is going to be once for every order line item. In our next screencast, we're going to add subtotals to every order and add subtotals to every customer. Thank you.